Hey, this is John Frenet, the co-host of the Maryland Crabs, and I am here today with a Maryland Crab Cake for your listening pleasure. What's a crab cake? It's not quite a full episode, it's just a little snippet. Stay tuned and check it out. And make sure you check us out on themarylandcrabs.com. You can follow us on Twitter at MD Crabs Podcast or find us on Facebook at the Maryland Crabs Podcast. And don't forget, subscribe, rate us, iTunes, go there now. You can always tell when it's the harbinger of fall when the seafood festival rolls around. And thank God it's been around for 51 years now. I know. Can you believe it, John? 51 <laughs> years. Neither one of us looked that old. <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> We're here at City Dock Coffee with Brendan Curley, who is the producer. Is that the word or the... the I guess. Or, you know, or I, the pick fool, up, the fool. I, <laughs> I pick up a lot of trash and I, uh, I move a lot of tables and chairs, so... Certainly help out the best I can. Well, you you are the producer, if you will, of the fifty uh, first annual Maryland Seafood Festival, which is going to yep. be held at Sandy Point Park on September eighth and 9th. Typically, the first harbinger of fall is near is Labor Day. Yeah, and the second one is this event that's been going on forever, and it's really a fantastic event. I do encourage anybody. First off, if you've never been to it, uh, you need to go to it. And as a non-seafood liking kind of a guy that doesn't eat any kind of a seafood, I do always have a good time there. There is lots more to do other than seafood. And as far as I've never starved, there's, <laughs> there's, there's plenty of things. I've never uh, partaken in some of the seafood festivities, but it's always a good time. Uh, a great family event. Uh, and very inexpensive to go to, I will say that. So it's not, you know, it's nothing like going to a Ravens game where you and your family of four are going to set down a thousand bucks for <laughs> You know, by the time you park, get in and do that. So um, yeah, appreciate that. September 8th and 9th at Sandy Point Park. One thing that I like about this is that the thing changes every single year. I mean, there, there are certain things that continue. You've got the crab soup cook-off, which has been around for 26, 27 years now. Yeah, I think. this is be the, I think, the 27th year. Okay. Um, I, I mean, th those have been around forever. The uh, the festival obviously has been around for fifty one. But you know, one year you had um, zip line yep. on, on 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 the beach. You know, last year I think you added the cabanas or the the private tents that people could could rent uh, to have a private. You know, if they wanted to entertain a family reunion or a, a business or something like that, they could rent this private VIP type cabana thing. Yep, we have a couple this year. One uh, big birthday party. Somebody's fiftieth. They're doing. They have uh, twenty five of the family coming in for uh, Saturday. So we're doing that again. Uh, very cool. So they yeah. they only missed one year. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so what's new this year? What do you is there what's new and exciting that we don't know about? The uh, you know thank you for saying that. I appreciate all the that intro that you just shared. Is that um, you know I think going back to you know we've been involved with the, with the uh, seafood festival for about almost ten years. now now in one form or fashion. Um, so not since the beginning. Right. But, uh, you know, it's got a rich history, you know, with the Clam Fest down at City Dock and then eventually outgrew City Dock and then moving it to Sandy Point where it's been for 30 years. So a lot of uh, a lot of history with this space. And certainly last year with our 50th, we tried to really create some sizzle around some of the events and that we had. And you did. So... You know, in 51, it's um, we, we always try to, and thank you for saying that, is one of the things that we do every year. We try to add two or three new elements or expand on ones that we thought were either lacking or there was some opportunity. So one of the things that we're doing this year is we're going to have the biggest kids area we've ever had. We're going to have, I think, 10 different uh, areas for them to explore through jumping or through competition or through rides. Um, so we've never had that many things for kids to do. And not just kids that are five and under, but kids that are, you know, middle school age. So one of the things we do with our pricing, as you alluded to, is that it's a, it's an inexpensive day. So 12 and under are free. So if okay. you have a family of five that the parents pay, but the, the kids are free. So it's, it's a nice thing in that regard. So we're trying to increase more things for them to do while they're there. So has that been a problem in the past? I mean, I, 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 took my kids there when they were younger and I, I never never was lacking for something to do i mean there was always it was usually up against that one building and wrapped around it with the the bouncies or the climby things and the, yeah uh, i think though we're our own worst critic we take the feedback we we uh we get from our patrons every year very seriously and i think that sometimes we feel like we do a really good job with the young young kids but we don't do quite as well with the middle that that middle school age and as my kids get to that age we certainly you know are more it's uh, more in your face of one things that they'd be looking for so we're trying to encourage them um, and try to create some programming around that level you need to hire one for your board 
<laughs> I really do. <laughs> to, to tell your kid, hey, tell your dad, you need some money. <laughs> the, uh, they certainly know that. The, uh, but um, yeah, so we'll see. But there's a couple of new things to your point, to your really drill question was um, we're really excited is we have four um, soccer teams coming on Sunday that are professional. And they're going to have a round robin tournament. So we have a local team in Annapolis, one in Baltimore, one on the Eastern Shore, and one in uh, Pittsburgh that are going to come and play. Um, so they're professional, um, professional soccer. So the Baltimore Knights, you might have heard of them. Yeah, yeah, they're a new um, team this year. They um, or last really year. last year. They're really exciting to watch. Good, good young people trying to make it, and uh, certainly we appreciate that. And their season's just getting started the weekend after the seafood festival, so they're going to do a sand soccer, um, a pretty hardcore tournament on Sunday with the four teams. So you're going to be able to see some of the best young athletes around in soccer play so on the, the beach. These professional athletes, I mean, this, and I, I, I'm, I'm not up on my soccer or, or football, depending on what side of the pond you're on, but I mean, these guys are, the next step for them would be like the Baltimore Blast. Is that, or is that? That would be the next step up. Yeah. Okay. And, but that's, or a lot of them are trying to go to Europe and trying to do different, you know, different areas. So right. depending on their age and if they're going to trying to do school still or what, what their, what their program, some of them are out of work or they're, they're out of school and they're, in between right. they're working a full-time job and still playing so trying to doing, do, doing the minor sort of the minor league thing i remember uh, the bay Sox way back when i talked to uh, a couple of the players i said yeah at one point i don't know whether it's the same but it was like yeah we get 2500 bucks a month and that's got to cover it all yeah <laughs> well i played hockey in the same scenario down in norfolk virginia for a couple of years and then the same thing i think the first year i made 350 dollars a week right and that uh but you know Playing hockey for a living was uh, was a lot of fun at the time and trying to make it to the next level. And so I can appreciate that and respect what they're trying to do. And we're excited to showcase that at the Seafood Festival. Last year, we had the, the, the Baltimore Knights came and did some just some demos on the beach. And it was super well received. We had great feedback on it. They did a lot of stuff with the kids at their booth as well. And they gave out a bunch of tickets. And so huge uh, new con- partnership with us. And now we're expanding on that, going to my original point is, hey, we saw something that worked. Let's make it better this year. Right. So, so you've got the tournament. And now we have a tournament on Saturday with um, it's going to be middle school and high school age tournaments. So we have high school kids and middle school kids are going to play on Saturday against each other in a more of a traditional soccer tournament. OK. So now if you think about it, as you as, as both of us as parents with kids that went through sports. Wouldn't it be great to have an venue at the Seafood Festival? So in between games, you're not just sitting on the sideline. You could walk and you shop. Watch or little go little Timmy, Timmy do his stuff. That's yeah. great. Now, is it a challenge playing soccer on sand as opposed to? Is that like a- <laughs> Well, they, you know, in the, at the beach in Ocean City, they have a huge sand soccer presence. There's like you know, hundreds been, and hundreds of teams. Never been to that teams. place. <laughs> never been to Ocean City in all my life. Well, Now it's a badge of honor. The, but there's a lot of tournaments like that out there. And it, um, so we're excited about that to explore this part, this part of it, use the beach a little bit more. The other thing we're adding is we have a, um, we're adding a second stage. So we've always had the main stage that's, that goes all day. Now we're going to add an acoustic stage. And Backyard Billy's one of our sponsors, is putting a, a really cool tiki bar down on the beach. So we're going to have this tiki bar, and then right next to it is going to be an acoustic stage. So you're going to have almost an intimate setting within the larger setting that you can come and relax and be down on the sand. Okay, so that sort of peels it away from the hustle and bustle of the main part of the festival. That's right. You. That's right. And we're going to, Backyard Billy's going to provide a whole bunch of like uh, Adirondack chairs and some interesting seating areas. So it'll, it'll feel like a different space, not just being in the middle of the festival. So you're telling me that we're going to be sitting on the beach, listening to acoustic with a tiki bar at hand. The Chesapeake Bay behind us and the Bay Bridge right behind us on Comfy Am- Adirondack chairs. That's what I'm Man, saying. Man, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it sounds absolutely horrible there. So um, yeah, so we're excited about those those couple things, and then the uh, the second stage will be will be good. Is we we kind of go back and forth on that, you know, just on weighing it, what if it's really gonna to make a difference. We've tried it both ways, but. We're excited about a couple of the bands that we have, and I want to get into some of those bands. But um, yeah, in terms of the uh, the other thing that we've done last year that was new for us, that we had a scavenger hunt. So Sprint, one of our sponsors, gives us bags, and they donate a lot of product to the winners. And so what we do is we have 15 or so of our vendors have these giveaways. So if you go to the Baltimore Knights, for example, they'll give you a free ticket to a soccer game. Or if you go to uh, American Remodeling, you might get a koozie or something for stopping by. They'll stamp your scavenger hunt, and then you drop it off at Sprint for a chance to win a new phone or a new iPad or new something. So they're really committed to this, and it's great for us because it helps people moving around the festival. It gets them looking Instead of just looking at one or two things, you get to see a lot of really cool 
arts and crafts vendors and really cool things that are there. Well, I, w- I would say that's that's true because I mean I, I can see it's very easily coming in with one thing in mind. I'm here for the crab soup cook off. I'm here for uh, to see the Kelly Bell Band or whatever it may be. I'm one. And it's like, oh, did you check out the Bender Village? And you called it the Chesapeake Craft. What did you call it? You had, you've got a name. I know the Chesapeake the, Arts Village. The Chesapeake Arts. Village. Oh, where was that? It, you know, yeah. I, I can totally see that. So that's fantastic. It works well for your vendors because it brings people through them. It exposes them. Swag for your guests. Yeah, I think too. Then um, you know, it's and it, you said it too. The people come for crab soup, which is awesome, and we're excited about that. We, we that's going to be a highlight again. I are, we're under rumor that uh, that the governor will be there as one of the judges, so we're excited about that. Governor Hogan, um, his team has. You know, well, it's an election year. We got to. You know, <laughs> you know, is it? Can he buy some votes? You know, you know, you know, but I'll tell you, you know, John. The other thing that I remember when we first started working with the seafood festival, um, we had eight nonprofit food vendors was the so really ranging from different churches and to a couple that are still with us today including the boy scouts that have been with us really since the beginning and we love working with them and have them profit and and help the organization through the event so what now this year we have 19 and only one nonprofit. and what i mean by that is that one of our commitments to it was when i first started getting feedback about the event 10 years ago was hey the food's all over the place we have great stuff and it's it's just not consistent so we've tried every year to add two or three new food vendors to the mix and minimize the ones that didn't do very well and, and pick up some new ones so there's more variety more variances around crab not just fried everything Mm-hmm. Really trying to expand the menu options so that you can come, you know, and you as a non-seafood eater, there'll be plenty of non-seafood items too. But we really wanted to focus on every year taking our, you know, if you think about a, a, a sales group, you, you try to maintain your your best and you want to improve your worst. And so that's the same thing we do every year is we try to pull in two or three good new vendors. And we have a great one this year with a new pizza vendor that does some amazing seafood pizza. So, okay. again, just something a little different, not off the top, but, you know, to try a slice of that, I think will be certainly, um, you know, worth the trip out. Let's talk about tickets. Tickets are 65 bucks for VIP. Yeah, um, or, t- or uh, 120 for a couple. Okay, so you save 10 bucks there. Yeah. Um, general admission is $15. As you said, kids under 12 are free. Um, and if you go to your site, though, too, if you, you have the yep. discount code, so that's, you know, it's, right now, not a lot of people are paying 15 bucks even. So. Right. You can, you can save 25% and get it with i 2018 is the checkout code when you go to um, the website. It's EYE2018. Uh, seniors and military are only $10. Yeah. Uh, military needs ID. And then you're doing a first responders thing for the first 500 this year that get in for free. With, yeah. Uh, do you know what we started? You know, this year, um, actually, you know, we had the idea last year with, uh, with the, the event fell on 9 11. Um, and so what we did was we did a big thing about honoring those that serve. And we thought, hey, why not do something with the first responders? And we just felt like, hey, those guys, they, 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 they're doing it every day. And why not have them come out to the event and show a little appreciation? And we got great feedback on it. And, you know, it, it's, it seemed like a win-win. And so all of our events this year, we had a first responder first piece. Responders. And that, um, you know, especially for wings and for seafood, there was a lot of them there. And, you know, just more of just a little thank you. Well, that's, uh, you know, one more of the ways, you know, a subtle way that, the uh, ABC events, which is the, the corporate name of the Maryland Seafood Festival, is uh, you know giving back to the community for sure. The additional things that you may have to spend for when you get there is ten bucks for the crab soup cook off. Yep, and that gives you unlimited tastings. Yeah, we've 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 talked about changing the format to make it easier to flow, but at the end of the day, it's worked well for twenty seven some years, <laughs> and so yeah, so you want it's ten bucks, and then all you can sample. We don't throw you out; you can stay in there for three hours if you have to. Well, I'm looking at the uh, at the brochure for the crab soup cook-off, and it says that each vendor needs to bring like eight gallons of soup. So that could be an awful lot of crab soup somebody could consume if they can get That's to, right, yeah. So they that's work what, the line well. We asked them to do that, and I'll tell you, it's funny, is some of them take it so seriously. Like I think uh, you, know, you know our friend um, uh, Joe from Stan and Joe's. No, I don't know that guy. <laughs> no, that, no, nobody uh, knows that guy. He's, uh, you know, he's out as a front man and kind of – being the uh, the uh, the showman to help bring it in, and they've won the last two years with some of their soups, and it really um, they take that right the pride of that right back to the restaurant, 
And no, I think they really that do. we have some people that have been with us for 20 some years in this event. And, um, you know, and every year we, again, we add several new soups to try. And we also add not just the cream, but also an alternative. So some new things for you to try. Right, right. Well, that's, uh, that's basically it's the admission. And if you want to participate in the crab soup cook off, it's an extra 10 bucks. Yeah. Other than that, everything, obviously, the stuff you buy, uh, buy or consume is yours, but on, on you. But everything else is free. The entertainment. The, That's right. Yeah, the soccer games, the, the soccer stuff, and then we have the pogo stick guys, which we love. Oh, they're you back know, again. The expo. Yeah, yeah. Tell you, we we uh, we we had a bike group a couple of years that, that got good feedback, but nobody has given us the good feedback like the pogo. Like people love the pogo stickers. Yeah. They last year they jumped over a car. This year I can't tell you what they're going to do yet, but they're they they add some new twist to their act every year. Um, so can you, can you can you not tell me or won't tell me? I don't want to tell you to want to make it as a surprise, but they do some neat stuff every year. And I, I think that, um, again, we try to, um, for your 15 bucks, give you a good value between the bands and the, the entertainment stuff that are there. Um, also, two free chef demos. So we have chef demos every hour and a half so that you can go try. So what's sample. in a chef demo? What's, so we have, that? So we have chefs from all over the area. So some from D.C., Baltimore, Annapolis, where they come out and provide 100 free samples to the first 100 people that sit down in the seats. They'll show you how to make a specific dish, and then they'll let you try it. Um, okay. So free stuff for you to eat. And, and, and then check you got out. a chance to, for a Q&A with a chef for a little Absolutely, bit. Absolutely, yeah. So that's part of it is, hey, how do you do that or how do you think about um, that particular dish? And then uh, Maryland Department of Agriculture is a partner with us, and they're providing some catfish as an invasive species. So some of the chefs are using that as a oh, nice. as their fish that they're going to show you, hey, not only does it help the environment by getting rid of these, but they also taste pretty good. Right. Probably are they snakeheads, too? No snakeheads no, this year, no but snakes. we did. That's very good memory, I, I, though. We've I, had I, those for years. I do. I do. Yeah. I do remember that. But you'd also mentioned music, and the music is one thing I know that, uh, and I believe I'm not, I may not, I may have missed a year, but um, Kelly Bell Band's been there forever. I mean, they're, as you say, Joe McGovern, it seems to be like the, the front man for the crab soup cook-off, and there are certain givens when, with, the, with the Seafood Fest. And Kelly Bell Band, I know, has been there. Is he coming back again this year? He is, and uh, I don't know if I've ever shared the story with you, but I think it was, um, you know, the first couple of years when we, when uh, my wife and I started um, in this space is it rained the weekend of the Seafood Festival, and, and we weren't as smart as we were, or as not smart, not that we're smart now, but we didn't have as much contingencies in place for rain. Kelly was our closer, and it was pouring rain, and he unplugged and finished his set for the 20 people that were still there. He could have walked away. He had been paid, but he stood and, and did his deal and stood with us in the rain and made those 20 people ecstatic. And I just said, you know, he's willing to do that for us. We're going to stay with Kelly. And it's become a fixture of the event to, to close out with Kelly Bell. And so we appreciate those type of relationships that have been with us a long time. And um, the people really love him. He puts on a great show. He's a good cross yes. um, cross singer. And people all different genres really like listening to him. Mm -hmm. So he's been with us since. And that. Um, so, again, trying to build on what we love. And then every year we try to add three or four new acts and, and change it up a little bit. Well, I was looking at the lineup. I mean, you've got some good local acts. I mean, you've got Loose Ties or Signal 12. You've got Chasing Autumn, which I love the name. It's appropriate for the Seafood Festival and the date and everything else. Um, the Loose Ties, have you heard? It? They're legit. The, yeah. The lead yep. singer They're is, great. Uh, is, his voice is spectacular, I think. Yep. Common Courtesy, uh, Bobby and the Believers, which I meant to Google them before, but I have they been around forever? I think they've been around. So they, they actually played at the first Seafood Festival in I may have been like to a wedding, <laughs> wedding with them decades ago. Um, obviously, the Kelly Bell Band. You've got three day weekend, and but to close out on Saturday night, you've got a, a Journey Band. Yeah. So we had um, at the Wings, we had um, a Bon Jovi cover band that was mm -hmm. really well received. We got great feedback from our crowd on that, and we were chatting with him after. And he's like, you know, one of the best bands we've ever heard is this Journey Band. So they connected us with this Journey Band, and. We've heard a bunch of tapes and, and love them. And so they're going to close out the show on Saturday night. And then so picture this. You know, you painted the picture of sitting on the bay. Now, Saturday night, come listen, have dinner, and then listen to an amazing journey band and then watch the fireworks. So we're going to have the fireworks again. And for those of you that didn't see the fireworks last year, it was an amazing show. And we bought the same exact show for this year. That was spectacular. You know, the Sandy Point Park and where you set up with the Bay Bridge in the background and, and the, you know, the, the three events that I always think of are the Chesapeake Bay Blues Festival, the uh, Polar Bear Plunge, yep. and uh, 
the seafood festival. And there's always, I mean, if you're a photographer, there's the scenery is unbelievable. Uh, and to see the, you know, the fireworks going off with the, with, with that backdrop is, is phenomenal. And that was, that was a significant show. That wasn't a, that wasn't, you know, that next door neighbor shooting off the bottle rockets in the cul-de-sac behind you either. Yeah, it was great. And we used, we, like I said, we bought the same exact show that we had last year. So it's it's 20 minutes of power. We didn't want to have it 30. We wanted to have it 20 of, of, of uh, things happening. And you know, hopefully the weather will, uh, will, will be good to us again. But yeah, it's a great venue to sit. And I just thought sitting there with my kids, I was like, gosh, this is amazing. And uh-huh. I was like, gosh, this is what we try to do when we put on our events is say, do something that that you can be proud of or you want to have your family and friends there just to encourage you to think about that for a Saturday night. Well, I will say, I know the last, last year after the 50th anniversary, it was, uh, people were talking about it. I mean, it wasn't, uh, okay, we went and trying to go to school, Timmy. It was, uh, they, they were talking about it for a while and uh, people do look forward to this year after year after year. There are contests. You've got, I, I see you've got a crab cake eating contest, which I will not be entering this year, but that's, uh, <laughs> bring me a cheesesteak contest and I'll be there. But, uh, is that a that is there a cost to join that or do that? No, That's no a, just uh, we take the first. Uh, I think we do it twice a day, and it's two. Um, I think it's the first eight or ten people who sign up. But okay. yeah, there's no cost to any of that stuff. Just bring an appetite and. Yeah, that's and then the other thing is you get to take them with you. We don't take them back if you don't eat them all. So it's uh, oh, that's true. <laughs> so some people seem to one people one person ate one and then took the rest home last year. But are they um like it's on rolls and stuff? Or are they just uh, just a plain crab cake? So it's so it's grab your hand and yep. and jam it in your in your face or anything like that. Um, again, you've got the Chesapeake Village shopping area. You've got yeah. So another good thing is we have some new folks helping us with that, and we have fifty over fifty some arts and crafters, and we're trying to again add really cool new ones and eliminate some of the stuff that's redundant. Sure. So every year we try to get a little better with that stuff. It's not never going to happen overnight, but. If we can add five or six new vendors each year that have something neat to share. Well, I know I bought some Christmas gifts at, at that event, um, which is unusual for me just because I don't usually think about Christmas until Christmas Eve. But yeah. like, it's like, oh, you know, he might like that for Christmas and I'll, you know, pick up something there. You know, it's fairly, fairly inexpensive, but there's a uh, fairly a lot of unique stuff that's there as well. And I think, too, the other thing we have is the, the sports bars back. So as, as uh, you and I were talking before, it was that so we have Navy football right. that weekend. So you can watch that game if, right. you, if you want to be out at the beach and watching that. And then also on Sunday, the Ravens play against my Buffalo Bills in that. Um, so we'll have that game and the other game going on, if the, whatever other um, uh, game the team that we want. But we'll have plenty of TVs going so you can come on out, watch whatever your favorite team is right. and um, go from there. If it's ungodly hot, there is some shade. Um, Try to always have plenty of shade. And then I think we're going to open up that area in the front um, where there's a lot of those trees. Do you remember where the jumping toys have been in the past? Yes. They were, they were going to open that up and make that more of a seating area because it's got all that natural shade. Uh-huh. Um, and create another little um, environment that's quiet and where you can get some time to yourself. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. And the, and I guess the last thing I got is getting there. And as far as parking goes, you can pay to park on Sandy Point Park, and that's uh, 10 bucks to park. Yeah, and that goes to the park. That's, I okay. want to be clear. No, the just... park charges us for that. So we, we just pass that along. And what that allows us to do is to – so what's happened in the long, old days is that the park would sell out, and then you'd be stuck. You'd come to the park first, and then you'd go I mean, the park, to the The park is open to the public. It is. On the day. So, I mean, you've got beachgoers that are at the other side, other end of the beach and picnickers and everything else that are having – That's right. So we the buy the spots. So if you if you buy the spots online, then you guarantee yourself a spot, and okay. then you could still come in and pay. You pay more if you pay at the gate, because okay. it's it's they typically charge five or six bucks per person. Okay. This is a flat fee of ten dollars, which the park is gracious. We're super appreciative that they allow us to do that. Okay. So so the ten dollars will get me in the park and into my parking space. Into your parking space, guaranteed on site. Purchased in advance. Otherwise, I need to pay. Or you can go to pay five bucks, and then there's all sorts of deals that are out there with our system for okay. parking at Anne Arundel Community College. And we have a shuttle that goes every five, six minutes. Now, I've done that before. I've parked at the community college, and uh, you think, oh, my gosh, it's so far away. You don't realize, look look at a map in the back, the, sort of the back roads. I mean, you come right down College Parkway, and uh, it's, what, maybe like an eight-minute? Yeah, we talk about it being like ten minutes. And then the other thing is there's a lane specifically for the buses that we keep open right. so that they don't wait in line any, any time to come or go. So, actually, it's not bad. It's kind of one of those, what are you going to do? It's the most convenient space for us. Because we didn't want to have it use the stadium or use other areas where people coming from the eastern shore, people coming from right around the park, 
to go further away from home and then come back. And pa pass the event and yeah. to, to come back that so much. So logistically, and... it works pretty well. We've used lots A and B there for the last five or six years. So we feel like people are starting to get where the easier, you know, how easy it is to park there and get in and then get out. It, it really is. And then you guys do actually do, a, again, a good job with the buses because they, you know, this is awesome because every podcast we do, it's usually my phone that goes off. So this is great. It's just keeping it up in tradition. Somebody, somebody's phone is going to chime in with a, with, a, with a chime or something like that. But, yeah, no, it is very easy to get there. You park at the community college. You hop on the school bus that's right there. Eight minutes later, they're dropping you off, not in a parking lot far away. You're right there at the gate. Um, show them your ticket. Walk in and start to have a great day. Yeah, and the thing, too, you know, we also the, we have, I think, 20, um, 20 beers from Buck. Okay. That uh, will be there. We have our beer and oyster bar. That's ought to be awesome. I just want to mention that because we have five new oyster groups that are going to be there. So last year, I think we had two and they had some significant lines. And now we have five and we've complementing that with a bunch of really great beers from Buck Distributing. A lot of local beers like Flying Dog and Heavy Seas and those guys, as well as your traditional line or Lining Kugel, Summer Shandy. Right. Um, you know, your Miller, Miller products. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. you have that stuff anyways, but there's some really good stuff out there from the Maryland Brewers. I remember having a conversation with Betty Buck before the uh, Chesapeake Bay um, Bridge Paddle. Yeah. And she was saying, yeah, she's kind of a Miller Lite girl. <laughs> and, 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 it, and it was funny. And not, not that she just sells it, but that's what she, you know, it's, it's a good beer. I call, I call like the, uh, the Miller Lights is like the, the McDonald's of the beer. I mean, no matter where you go in the world, you get it. it's there, it's solid, it's, you know. But I tell you that summer shandy, you know, ever since I'd never had one, and then we started working with them for the Bay Bridge Paddle, mm -hmm. and that uh, since then I love it. I, I, we 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 have a lot of it in the summertime. Have you really tried good. some of their other flavors? I like the grapefruit a lot. Yeah, it's really nice because it's not too sweet. I yes. think some of them are really some of the, a lot of the the big brewers are doing the flavored beers now, but that grapefruit I really like because it's it's really refreshing. I, I bought in I bought in. Here's a new word. Mm -hmm. I, I have purchased several of the uh, uh, Lining Kugel. Uh, variety packs oh, okay. that have, uh, I, I think it's got like 18 cans in it or something like that. And it might have, you know, a, a number of the summer shandy and then the, the grapefruit. I think there's an orange. Orange, yep. I'm trying to remember what other flavor there was. I don't know if there's a strawberry or not, but there's definitely was, orange I know. But it was, yeah. Watermelon. Water, yeah. They've, they've got watermelon, which I don't really care for, but it's, uh, they do make it, they do make a good beer. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're like, we're like Milwaukee, Milwaukee or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, you, Lightning Kugel, oh, they're the German beer. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. It's but like, there's a ton. We'll have a ton from Heavy Seas and, and, um, and the local brews, Duclaw, um, Flying Dog. You know, some right. of the beers that are here that have a lot of different brands within the brand. A lot of right. different beers within the brand. Right. So, should be good. Um, well, you can quench your thirst. You can park your car. Uh, again, the, the community college is the way to go. I, I personally would suggest saving the 10 bucks because that's actually, I think your, your parking is limited at the at, at the festival, isn't it? Yeah, typically we we sell out for Saturday on site and then Sunday is close, depending it's, on the day, depending on the weather. It's a, it's a crapshoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the weather, you, you've been pretty lucky with the weather on this festival. Well... We we felt like we, earned, it, we felt it. like we felt like we earned it. We had a couple of years of torrential rain, and then we had a tornado one year, and then we've had. Um, it seems like every year we have a partial day that's a little bit off, but for the most part, you know, we've been, been lucky. Not I'm not going to wood. I want to be clear <laughs> that uh, we could use good weather, but at the end of the day, we're set up for you know for shade, as you pointed out, with the heat. You get great breezes off the bay if it's warm, and then it's if it is wet, it's it's wet for a short time. Even a rainy or a cloudy day at the beach, at Sandy Point Park, at the 51st Annual Maryland Seafood Festival is, is, is a good day. Um, sure. So save your dates. They are September 8th and 9th. What are your hours? Your hours are? 10 to 9 on Saturday, 10 to 7 on Sunday. Okay. Fireworks are on a Saturday night. Yep. Kelly Bell closes out on Sunday. Scarab, which is the Journey cover band, that's going to close out on Friday underneath on the- Saturday night. Saturday night, yeah, yeah. which is going to, yeah, yeah, don't go Friday night. <laughs> don't go Friday night. And save 25%. And you can, uh, we've got, I'll put a link in the uh, show notes here, but I2018, and that's E-Y-E. -E. You can go to MarylandSeafoodFestival.com, put the code in there, save 25%. And also check out our Facebook and Twitter pages, which is All Annapolis or I on Annapolis, because Brendan was so generous. He gave us two tickets a day. To give out and i'm trying to be fastidious and be on time and do that each day but sometimes i don't but then i double up when i realize i missed a day um, so we do have a lot of tickets to give away to the seafood festival if you've never been 
Uh, try hard to get them and get there and go. If you've never been and you don't win any, go buy them. I mean, it's it's 15 bucks for a uh, for an adult, and it's well worth your time. It's a beautiful day at Sandy Point State Park, and he's bringing it again for the 51st year. Thanks very much. Yeah, appreciate you having me. Thanks a lot, John. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.